president, the stock fell to say, if our member dies, do we pay out the profits? What if all the money is tied up in in an in, in, in agriculture venture? We don't have liquidity to pay this person. What do we do? Okay, so those are some of the things that would be in your constitution. What if there's conflict? How do we resolve the conflict? What if all of a sudden directors are not getting along and this one has this idea and the constitution is silent on that? There must be a conflict resolution mechanism in this document. There must be a profit sharing mechanism. How do we share profits? What do we do with a member who all of a sudden defaults for three months? They're no longer bringing their, their share of the mine. Are we, are we still together? So do we understand the importance of this document? And once you have this document, workshop it among the entire group and let's all adopt it. Until we get to a point where we all are comfortable with it, we simply do not have a document to work with. Basically, unless there's consensus, we will constantly have that one member who's on some, and like now, I never really agreed to this. <laughs> so, pila pila sanduani, you know? So, workshop the document, get everyone's views, your meetings, your voting rights, all these things need to, it needs to be a very comprehensive document, so that when, that days come, guys, where there's money and people, There'll be conflicts somewhere along the way. But if you have this document, it can stand in court as well. You know, if there should be a point where now we're all making money out of the stock fair, we can afford to take each other to court. You know, we're fighting our battles in the legal system. This document will be our guiding light. Okay, over and above that, you need a shareholders agreement, which can be incorporated into the constitution, or you can have a different document altogether, talking about shareholding to say, who owns what? You know, will, will our shares grow? Will our shares depreciate? How do they grow? How do they depreciate? What affects, you know, profit sharing and all these things? So this is a separate document, which will again be guided by the group itself to say, guys, how do we do this? And in this way, you would have protected yourselves. So now I cannot come after Mamogeti personai. I come after Kobano. Stock fed, and everyone can sit back and say, uh, it, um, mm, you know, if a third party comes through and we need to sue this third party, we can all come together and say, okay, Gopanello will sue this third party. If we need to procure services, they're not procured in anyone's single name, but they are procured in a company's name. Are we comfortable with this? Does it make sense? Who's in farming? What's the GDP of farming? I think Leon is less than 10%. Nee. Who can guess what's the GDP contribution of franchising? Just a wild guess. Okay? 20. Yeah, you are close. It's about 15.6%. Most businesses that in franchising, from those other stores, you, you find hotels, you find fuel stations, so you can see how big the industry is how many people the industry is hiring. So the industry is huge. And it's not only food, because I, I meet a lot of people who think it's food. We've got healthcare, we've got education. So let's not only think well, it's KFC or McDonald's. They are not franchising, they use the franchise model. Because once you mention franchising, automatically people think McDonald's or KFC. So my friends, I'm with the Devonest, Tears and Fisherways, which they're under the famous brand. They are with the Wimpies, and, and all, and all that, um, and, and I can be impressed. So for me, I, I, I really like to say, let's look into the stock fund model and apply the same model, looking it into franchising. Because the, the franchising, what it does, you, you, you use the same system even if you move location. Like today, if you go to KFC in Oliver and Bosch, you'll find the same KFC in Centum. Am I right? The branding is the same, the pricing are the same, the recipe is the same. So even with us as black businesses, we can still use the franchising model to expand our businesses. If now you are running a coffee shop, your same systems, you can now sell them to another person to open the same brand, for example. So I'm not only here to show you about the franchising industry with existing brands, but I'm just saying, let's start as black people to use the franchise model to grow ourselves because it's really pointless for like Mutupi now, he's in farming, chicken farming, poultry. 
he's using the franchise model because he's, he takes his notes, he shares with other people, so that when you start, you don't have to start from scratch. It's really pointless to be paying the same school fees that need to be paid. We're not going to get anywhere. We, we didn't start uh, with um, the Bantu education. Are, are we there today? Imagine CAT coming here and saying, guys, no, 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 you must start up Bantu education. You must go and strike. We're not going to get anywhere as a country. You understand? So the French is module, that's what I'm saying, that I'm not here only to tell you about the existing. If you've got a coffee shop, invite us to your business and say, guys, here my recipe has my price. If you want the same business in Bulawai, let me help you set up. The beauty about it, you'll get royalty fees. It's only fair that we pay you royalty fees. We will have joint buying. Same applies to software. When you've got a wine designer, you are paying one fee, there's two of you. You, you, you understand? If you're buying, let's say, stock with ABI, now you can club together, now you increase your buying power. You understand? So there's so much that in the franchise model that us as black businesses, as aspiring entrepreneurs, we can look into an existing business and use their model to start a certain business because most of us, we are really starting in the same industry. Like we've got a, a, in this thing, a kiddie salon. So if you want to open a kiddie salon in Devon, if you've seen one in four ways, meet the person, speak to the owner, and then have a joint venture somehow. But you are all going to own your own entity, like the gallery said. You are still going to have to open your own business account, your own uh, CIPC, you're going to have to raise stuff. So it's not as if the person takes over. Okay. I'm honored to be standing here in front of you and to talk about property investing via a stock bell. So when we started, we really wanted to have a big vision about what is it that we wanted to achieve. So when we were thinking big, we thought of how are we going to raise a million rand a month? How we, so that already set us off on the foot of expansion from the get-go, because when you think small, you're going to start small. So we had big ambitions from the get-go that we wanted to raise a million rand. I remember the time someone was asking us, so we're like, we want to buy lots of buildings all over the country and all of that. So that was the vision. But sometimes when you're starting out, you start with where you are and what you've got. So even if you've got the big vision, you start with, okay, what do I have access to? We had issues around structuring. How do we structure this thing? You know, how do we, do we do it as a trust? Do we do it as a company? Do we do it as well? So we're like, ah, you know what? For the meantime, to get started, we'll worry about that. But for the meantime, we're not gonna let our money sit in the bank and end 3% in a savings account. Sorry, stop fella, no offense. We're like, stop fella, we're like one of the biggest clients. You know, and they give very good interest, by the way, compared to what some of the other offerings are. But it to start working for us immediately. So we do what we call partnering with other investors. So you don't have to be the one who's out there finding deals, placing tenants, doing maintenance, if you don't have the skills yourself at that point in time. So you partner with people who can do that for you. So that is what it's all about. Um, one of the speakers spoke about partnering and doing joint ventures. So you can do joint ventures in Stockholm. If you feel that you, you want to do franchising, but you don't know how to do it, you can partner with Spatabil and say, you know how to do this, we'll put in the cash and you run with it. Or someone who's in mining, you feel like, you know what, how mining works, we'll put in the money and you do the work. So that is how we then started as a Stockfell. So our Stockfell has taken off like more than we could have ever imagined. I think we're now sitting on close to about 100 members at last count. Um, and we've raised well over two million rand <laughs> in that period. Um, and last year we also managed to actually um, win the South African Investor of the Year for property. <laughs> you know, so this just goes to show that we need to think outside of the box and not be limited by things that like I don't have money or I don't, this looks too scary for me. Find someone who knows how to do it, partner with them and learn along and along the way and then you'll be able to stand on your own. So we've, so fortunately enough, we've been able to, to overcome now the hurdle. We've consulted legal and tax experts and all of that and we're now ready to um, get into, we've chosen a structure that we feel would be better for our members where we're now going to be owning the properties, where the members are actually going to become shareholders or trustees of our um, beneficiaries of the actual stock for Good afternoon everybody. I'm Fukes Rungwana from Tendisa. I'm so happy to be in this kind of stock fair. Because I've learned that it's not a uh, stock fair less as a luxury, as a sunset. You can make stock fair in each and every business. In mining, 
the stock fair, in farming the stock fair. We've learned a lot even about uh, law matters, so that uh, if you, 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 you do um, uh, um, a company, a company, it must not just be registered on the first have a constitution and bound by the law. Uh, hi there, my name is Tabo Mufuke. Uh, I represent a investment club converted into a company called Yangisa Capital Investments. Uh, today's session was great, good starting point for us people to talk about uh, the collective investments and the power of collective investments. This is a start uh, and I think that we can grow into something amazing. Uh, if you look at the population of South Africa, the demographics of South Africa, uh, and you understand where the population is. Let us use that to our advantage.